Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This will be my long-awaited manga collection video of 2020. I am very, very excited. I first started my collection back in April of 2020, and so it's been a whole eight months since I've started, and during this time I've racked up about 400 volumes and I have more on the way, but I decided that I would just get this video out as soon as I can. So yeah, I hope you guys really enjoy this video and let's get started. Alright, so looking at my collection from afar, you can see that I have kind of an array of shelves. On the left side right over here, I have one full Billy IKEA shelf. And if you guys are interested to see where I got that and how I built it up together, you guys can go and check out my manga bookshelf shopping video that I'll link right up there. And on the other side, we have these two shelves that I originally had. So these two are actually two mini shelves stacked on top of each other. And a lot of people have asked me what shelves these were, but I I have asked my parents again and again and they say that they got these shelves more than a decade ago at like a garage sale or some random store sale so they're unsure themselves but I know Walmart and Target have very similar small white shelves as well. Without further ado let's get started on our very left shelf. I say that as if I had many many shelves but I just have these two columns. Over here I have placed a lot of decorative items. I will be utilizing this shelf to place more manga here because the rest of my shelves are filling up and then moving on right down over here. I'm not sure if you guys could tell from far away, but the hierarchy that I kind of organized my entire collection is based off of number one, height and size of the volume. So I group all like-sized manga together. And then the second order is publisher. And then the third one after that is the title. So you guys will kind of see how I did that throughout this video. So the first series to start off is Ajin. So Ajin is an insane, insane series. I know a lot of you guys have already heard me talk about this, as well as a lot of other manga YouTubers talking about this series. So Ajin is a horror series that revolves around demi-humans. And this series, in my opinion, is kind of similar to Parasite and Tokyo Ghoul. It's just a bit darker than both of them combined because the art itself in this series is extremely well done and detailed and, and dark colored in nature. And as you can see on this page, you know, you can kind of get the sense of the series. There's a lot of blood, violence, and a lot about humanity and, you know, the ethicality of research on these seemingly non-human beings. So if you guys are into horror, highly, highly recommend Ajin. And then the next series here is I Am a Hero. So I Am a Hero is a zombie series and I have not read this series and I've heard it's getting harder and harder to get your hands on this series just because it's getting out of print. Classic Dark Horse. Yeah, I've heard the series is really, really good. Again, the series is pretty dark and I would say the art is kind of pretty similar to Ajin. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys know the webtoon Sweet Home that just recently got a Netflix adaptation. From my first initial impression upon just flipping through it, I feel like it's pretty similar but those of you guys who have read this series, let me know what you guys think down below. And the next series here is Dream and Sun, and I have no idea why volume six <laughs> is in front over there. Let me fix that real quick. So Dream and Sun is by Ichigo Takano, the same mangaka as Orange right here. <laughs> classic, classic mangaka and series Orange. But yeah, Dream and Sun is a very different series from Orange in my personal opinion. Dream and Sun is a very fluffy and comedic shoujo. And honestly, in the beginning, the girl can get quite annoying or it just kind of it just makes the reader kind of go like girl why are you doing this but um i think over time it kind of gets better but i really like how the girl is very you know strong-willed i really admire her for that and i think it's getting a bit better of course classic dark horse these volumes are pretty expensive as well that's why it's been taking me a while to collect this series next is i want to eat your pancreas and this is a recent read for me and oh my goodness this is insane and this series was so good that i've ended up watching the anime movie. So this is basically about a girl who has pancreatic cancer and doesn't have a long time to live. So this entire story is from the perspective of this boy. So we kind of get to see how she lived her life through his eyes. So highly, highly recommend for a very bittersweet series. Next up, we have Orange. And so I have Orange, the complete collection, volumes one and two, which is complete. And also Orange Future. I just wanted to, you know, get the whole thing. So this series is also a very bittersweet slice of life, school life series. 
It mainly revolves around the main girl character getting a letter from herself in the future, telling her, you know, what's gonna happen in her life, and her realizing some of the things that were mentioned in the letter come true. And, you know, those are both good and bad things combined, so yeah. And I heard Orange Future is basically just the story of Orange, but told from another perspective. All right, moving on, we have Tomo Chan as a girl, and come on, <laughs> do I need to even say anything further? I saw Bay Senpai's monthly manga reads video. Video and he had read the series and he highly recommended it so I decided to pick it up so I'm not going to explain too much about this just because I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what's up but yeah it's a very funny romantic school life series that is very different from your shoujo so yeah this is a series for everyone and it's not those fluffy shoujo so if you guys are scared of those don't be afraid to pick this series up and the next up is Toradora and I unfortunately only have volumes four and five of this but I absolutely adored the anime I just recently watched it myself I found it so so cute that I decided to pick up the manga. I'm gonna have to work hard to keep collecting this series But if this is an amazing romance comedy series, I highly recommend and next up is Mob Psycho 100 And I unfortunately have not had the pleasure of reading this series So this is by one who is also the amazing mastermind behind One Punch Man and I've seen clips from the anime <laughs> and this is a very very unique series so all I know is about it's some kid with some psychic abilities and basically it talks about his school life and you know his adventures being a psychic so as you can see here the art is very very unique from what I've heard a ton of other people enjoy this so I'll definitely be looking to read this very very soon and on the side here, I have just put some uh, squishies here just to fill this void because I know that I will be collecting more of Tomo-chan and Toradora and also Dream and Sun and possibly some other Dark Horse series that I will just slide right here. <laughs> Alright, so moving on to our second shelf down below here. So here we have a continuation of the Dark Horse Publishers. So over here we have HP Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. So this is a manga adaptation of Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. And so this is a very classic horror series. This is set in Antarctica and it revolves around, you know, a team expedition out in Antarctica. They find a lot of weird things and so the art is very, very well drawn. All the details are extremely intricate. So yeah, that's that and I have the complete adaptation volumes one and two. All right, and next up I have uh, the Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service. And this is the huge omnibus edition by Dark Horse once again. So this is also another horror series. Uh, maybe you guys can tell, but the art is a bit of an older style, which I really do prefer in horror series. I'm not sure why. What I know about this series is that it centers around five um, Tokyo students from a particular Buddhist university, and they decide to kind of utilize their skills and their knowledge to apply to the dead and so they see you know souls trapped in the bodies of the dead and they basically try to free them so yeah that's basically what's going on with this series and then after that we move on from the horror dark horse um, area to a more you know fun and nostalgic area personally and so here we have Kamikaze Kaito Jean by Irina Tanimura one of the most classic shoujo you know mangakas out there I absolutely adore her series this is a very very classic series that I personally have watched the anime a long long time ago and I absolutely loved it so much I remember my first gmail account back in you know middle school I had this main character Jean as my profile picture and so of course we have Irina Tanamura's classic art style, the huge eyes. So I only have volume one right here, but yeah, you'll see another edition of that later on. And then next up we have Kare Kano, and this is another very nostalgic romance school life series and the English translation that some of you guys might know is His and Her Circumstances. So as you can tell, we've moved to the Tokyo Pop region of my bookshelf. So this is a random volume that I got in another eBay lot from when I first started collecting manga. This is a series that I did read a long time ago and it talks about two students who seem to be putting on a fake face in school and how they kind of discover their true selves you know, from each other throughout the series. 
Yeah, so the girl is a model student in school, but then, you know, the guy finds her true self. He can see through her fake smiles and her fake mannerisms. Yeah, this is just a very kind of dramatic series as well. Looking back at this now, I'm kind of interested in rereading this series and maybe collecting the entire thing at some point. All right, and then the next series is Kadocha by Miho Obana, um, or some of you guys might know it as Kodomo no Omocha. So basically a child's toy with direct English translation. And this series is getting harder and harder to find because it's out of print and it's old Tokyo pop. But I think that this series is one of my most memorable childhood series. I have a few to name and this is particularly it. I was so invested in Sana and Hayama, the guy. This series starts off when both the two main characters are very, very young, like in elementary school, I believe, and it goes all the way up until they are in high school and the girl is kind of like a child celebrity. She does a lot of, you know, actress work. Wow, the guy is a more normal, I believe, but he, very angsty child. It's very dramatic. If you guys are looking for a kind of comedic, but also old art style, you know, romance series, this is the one for you. And it's very cute as well. And so I'm definitely looking forward to collecting the rest of the series so I can, you know, start rereading it. And then next up, we have Marmalade Boy, which is another really, really classic series for me. Very cute and heartwarming. I got this series used from Mercari. I think this might be one of the first series that I picked up when I started collecting. And I did reread this series a couple months ago. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's a great journey and highly recommend again if you are into that, you know, cute, fluffy romance, but also with the dramatics of like the 1990s. And then the next series here is Sword Princess Amaltea, and this was very kindly gifted to me by the mangaka herself, Natalia Batista. And so yeah, I personally really enjoyed this. This is very different from anything I have. As you can see, she's a princess who really knows how to fight. And in this world, all of the gender roles and stereotypes are reversed. So the guys are seen as very feminine, weak, and need to be protected by, you know, the muscular, powerful woman. So I just thought that that was such a fascinating fascinating twist. This just makes for a very, very fun read. It's completed with three volumes and it has some great action scenes, fighting, it even has some magic in there, and it has a lot of great comedic breaks. And then the next series we have here is Daytime Shooting Star by Mika Yamamori. And so this is another classic shoujo series for those of you guys who are into shoujo. You guys would definitely know this series. Basically, it's, you know, a girl who moves to Tokyo. <laughs> a lot of shoujo series start like that. But yeah, she moves to Tokyo and then she, you know, has a very handsome homeroom teacher who she coincidentally met aside <laughs> from school. And yeah, it just rolls around friends, you know, relationships and her life in Tokyo. And so this is again a very, very, you know, fluffy and heartwarming shoujo series and I absolutely adore all of the covers and the art is very soothing to look at. So yeah, if you're into shoujo, highly, highly recommend. Moving along, um, this is the shoujo beat section and so here is Full Moon and I have the entire series completed one through seven and I have duplicates of three just because I was so eager to collect this series that I just picked up volumes from random places but I ended up getting a complete set later on. Another one of the classic, classic series that I've read. And so this entire shelf, I really do love it just because it has so many of these type of series. And so Full Moon is something special. The anime is absolutely gorgeous and the OSTs and the voice actress of the main character here is so talented. I think she's the lead singer of a band and so of course her singing is very stunning and story revolves around a girl who really wants to sing but she has a medical condition that doesn't allow her to it's also a medical condition that is fatal and so she has these two angels of death sort of who come to her side and you know tell her you don't have that much time left but then she only has like one wish to be able to sing and they transform her into an older girl so she could be able to you know go to auditions and basically become a singer and so this is a very very heartwarming and also very bittersweet series by classic arena tanemura and so yeah highly recommend if you're looking for something to sob about and the anime is amazing as well 
And the last one on this is Made Sama. So I absolutely love these additions, the two-in-ones. I think the covers are extremely gorgeous. And so, I mean, who does not know Made Sama? <laughs> you know, the anime is iconic. It's one of the best shoujos to date. I still think so. Everybody needs somebody like Usi in their life, you know? And the covers are stunning once again. And my favorite one has to be this volume seven through eight. I got this particular one at Barnes and Noble. And this was a very interesting find because I think the series is also getting harder and harder to find. I can't purchase these for retail on Amazon for some reason. So, you know, I'm slowly making my way, but definitely looking forward to collecting the entire thing because this is such a great series. All right, so now that we're done with the second shelf, let's move on to the third one right here. Starting on this shelf, we are still continuing our shoujo beat section. So first thing here is my love story. And so this is also one of the most <laughs> iconic shoujo series um, that is more recent, I believe, compared to the other series that I showed beforehand. So my love story, the main guy character, if you can believe, is rather not him but him, the guy in the back. And the girl is a very cute, dainty girl, which you can see right over here. So this is a love story between these two main characters and it's just so, so cute. And a lot of people have said, which I completely agree with, if that you're interested in starting out into the shoujo genre, but you're not too sure, you know, which series to get and you don't want to get like overwhelmed with cringe, then this series is a great one to start with. It's still insanely sweet. And the reason why I have this volume six here is because this also came in a random lot. Oh, volume four, sorry. I actually have the entire Japanese um, series um, in another shelf that I'll show later. All right, moving on, we have Oron High School Host Club, and this is another stray volume. This is volume four. I might just end up getting the box set because I think that might be the cheapest way to get it. This is another very classic series. I would put this on the same level as Made Some Up, personally, because I watched them at the same time and they both left a very strong impression on me. And so next up we have Phantom Thief Jean, which is basically Kamikaze Kaito Jean is right here. So this is the CMX version and then this is the Viz Shoujo Beat version. And I personally like this cover better, even though this one does have the glossy texture, but I really like the visuals of this better. And I'm really looking to collect this entire series, all of the volumes. I believe there are five or six of them. And then after that, I have Sakura Hime, also another Arena Tanemura series. This was also in a random eBay lot. I seem to have a ton of random volumes from when I first started collecting because at that time I was just obsessed with getting my hands on any series that I want. But now that I've been collecting for a while, I kind of realized the importance of only collecting the ones that you really set your heart on. And so this series I personally am not really familiar with, so I don't think I'll be collecting this anytime soon, but I also have not read the first volume, so maybe I'll read this first and then decide for myself. And then after that, I have Skippy, another classic, classic shoujo. I think that this is the longest running shoujo. It is still going on. And so I collected the first two volumes and then I gave up because this is such a long, long series and I don't even know when it's gonna end. So I feel like I'm just going to keep up with the series digitally for now. And so Skippy is an iconic shoujo series, of course, and about the acting world and about this girl who decides to get revenge on her ex-boyfriend for dumping her and using her. And so she decides to enter his industry, the entertainment industry, and she meets a bunch of people there and she grows to become a better version of herself but also a better actress and an entertainer. The next series here is Ultramaniac and again I only have the first two volumes of this. There are five volumes in the complete series. Ultramaniac is another very old anime that I used to watch and so this revolves around you know like witches, magic, but also romance at the same time. So these two girls are the main two characters. They are two guys who, um, you know, are also in the story, of course. So yeah, it's a very interesting series. And these are some of my most yellow volumes just because I got them used. And I think they got baked <laughs> during transit. I personally have not read the series in a while now. It's just nice to have this here just in case I want to reread it. Next up is Hanakimi. 
which is another shoujo series. This is the girl in the middle and she decides to attend a boys high school um, just so she can get close to this guy who is an athlete. They both are very into track and so this guy, he's very good at the high jump and so she really admires him for that and basically comes to an all boys school just to see him and she's rooming with this guy and so it's a very interesting situation going on here. The art style is very simple but very very cute. So yeah, if you guys are looking for an interesting shoujo series, then definitely try this out. I just have volumes one through three used from, I believe, an auction, an eBay auction. So yeah. Next up, we have Kari First Love, another shoujo. The art here is really, really amazing. We have this very dull girl. And so yeah, and this is a very romantic series set in a high school setting. The next series is Do Ra Ra Ra. And so I have the first three volumes of this and we are moving on we are moving on to normal sized yen press. This is one of the first series that I ever bought. Uh, I kind of want to collect the fourth volume of this to start reading it. Have heard that this series is amazing. And the next is Horamiya. So this <laughs> series is so, so adorable. I got this off of Half Price Books. This revolves around a girl and a guy, school life, of course, but from what you see here, they are very different than what they show to the outside world. They both have sides that they haven't shown their friends, but they, you know, find that out about each other and they basically grow closer and, you know, they they have a side of themselves that they only, you know, allow the other person to see and it's just a very endearing relationship. And also the anime, there have been so many anime trailers that have come out for Horimiya in the past couple of weeks. It's insane. I am so, so excited for when I am able to finally watch it. But I'm very excited to see um, how the rest of this series goes because I have not caught up with it. The next series is Kobato by Clamp, and this series is a freebie that was thrown in by a very kind, I think, Reddit seller, but I really, really love Kobato. I don't really remember what this story revolved around because I watched the anime eight to nine years ago, so it's been a while, but I still remember the song, the opening song of this. It's absolutely beautiful. And so I won't be collecting the rest of this series for now because it's not top priority, but perhaps sometime in the future. Next up is LDK, another classic shoujo series, but a lot of people have been hating on this series. Can't really say much because I haven't read that far into it. I only have the first two volumes, but from what I've heard online, a lot of people say the guy is a total douche <laughs> later on in the story. And so that has kind of prevented me from picking up the rest of the series because I do believe this is a quite long series. There are, you know, many, many volumes to this. So I will be reevaluating and thinking about it. But basically it's about a guy and a girl in high school who end up living together under, you know, unique circumstances. And of course they fall in love, but there are tons of, you know, obstacles and stuff. And of course the guy, you know, hides his feelings and is quite mean to the girl sometimes. So yeah. Next up is Noragami, and you know, a ton of you guys know Noragami. The anime is amazing. I watched the anime, but I have not started reading the manga, so I will be um, catching up with the series and reading this. But yeah, it's a very interesting kind of spirit, god, like romantic <laughs> series that's just pretty fun. Up next, we have Parasite, something that I've talked about quite a lot <laughs> in my videos. So this is another horror series quite similar to Ajin and Tokyo Ghoul, in my opinion. A parasite, you know, invades the main character Shinichi, but the parasite doesn't manage to, you know, take over Shinichi's entire being. So they end up, you know, coexisting. But at the same time, the world is in utter chaos because everybody is being like devoured <laughs> and eaten by parasites. Next up, I have Sailor Moon. So I have Sailor Moon volumes one through seven, but that is incomplete. There are 12 volumes to Sailor Moon and I also have codenamed Sailor V, but I am slowly working on this. I think I, when I first started collecting, the first series that I wanted to start collecting was Sailor Moon, just because this is such a magical series. But believe it or not, I actually did not grow up with this series. I started watching the anime only about a year ago, but I am absolutely hooked. This story is just so cute and it just makes you, you know, happy and smile 
you know, even during a very rough day. And a lot of you guys have said how it was cute in my other video, how Sailor Moon was right next to Hunter Hunter because the two mangakas, Takeuchi and Togashi are married in real life. And that is so, so cute. So, you know, perhaps when I'm feeling bored of the setup, I definitely will switch things around and put them two together. Next up, we have Waiting for Spring. And so this is another shoujo series. And I would say that this is more of like a very harem-like shoujo series. There are a ton of guys chasing after our main girl character. And it's just a wild, wild ride with traditionally, conventionally good-looking guys all chasing after this one girl. And, you know, she, of course, you know, goes through a lot of trouble <laughs> deciding, you know, what her true feelings are and stuff like that. But yeah, this series is a very cute, innocent, romance series in the high school setting so you know if you guys are looking for something like that definitely go check this out and of course the guys are all from the basketball team so you know <laughs> add a little spice in there and some sports and then the final normal size kodansha volume i have is your lie in april and i got this from half price books hence the sticker but yeah your lie in april is a classic classic stories that revolves around music and life and has like friendship relationships in there and it's very bittersweet series and so next up this is going to be a bit of a weird turn so so originally i was planning on continuing this shelf onto over there however my brain somehow worked differently at that time and i decided to kind of move things that way and it goes down over here and then down over there and then it goes back up here. So forgive me for the confusing setup. I'm still kind of working on how to arrange everything. I have a couple more packages coming on the way as well. So that will definitely move things around. But for now, this is just the way I'm going to keep it. So here I have Bakuman and um, sorry, it looks camera's angle is really weird, but I basically have volumes five and six on this shelf right here and one through four right here. So Bakuman is a series that I'm still working on collecting and also reading. I have read up to, I believe, volume four or five. But yeah, this is a very unique and brilliant series by the same authors of Death Note. But this series revolves around, you know, the process and the thinking behind writing a manga series. So this guy is very good at art. And then we have his friend, who is the cover of this one, who is a genius writer. And so they come together to collaborate on their journey of writing manga together, which I found was very, very unique just because this story was, you know, the work of two people, an artist and a story writer, very similar to Bakuman itself. And if you guys are interested in what goes behind the process and also more on the manga industry, I highly recommend this series to check out. All right, so moving on to this shelf over here, <laughs> just because of my weird setup. The next series I have here is Black Clover. So Black Clover, I am still working on collecting. It is a very long series with an incredible anime adaptation. And so I have watched a bit of the anime, but I have not started on reading the manga, but everybody says it's incredible. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting started on that too. It's a very um, comedic and very well done shonen series very interested in continuing that next up is a very very recent pickup black torch i actually just got this series in yesterday and was very excited to add this to my shelf this is basically about a guy who can talk to animals and one day he kind of talks to a mystical cat and that kind of leads him into a whole nother world of like demons and action and things that he did not sign up for <laughs> which is often how life works the next series we have here is Dead Man Wonderland, and, but Dead Man Wonderland is so, so amazing. The story is about a prison, private prison system that is called Dead Man Wonderland, and they basically, it's a very cruel place because the Dead Man Wonderland is also kind of a theme park for outside the general public where they get to come in and kind of see the prisoners kill each other, torture one another, and all of that gruesome and very unethical stuff. And so our main character here gets wrongly convicted for a whole classroom-wide murder that happened to his class. And so he gets sent to Dead Man Wonderland and he works with a bunch of different people to get out of the system. 
and to kind of expose how corrupt and unethical the entire Dead Man Wonderland is. And so it's very action-packed and it talks a lot about relationships, friendship, and they meet a lot of great people along the way. Next up is The Drifting Classroom and this is a stray volume, volume 5, that I also got in a random lot. And so I have the omnibus edition, the huge thick ones that were released by Viz, the Viz signature ones. And so this is an older release, the singles. And so this series is uh, very classic and I'll talk more about this series when we get down to the bottom with the larger edition because that's the one that I read. Just put this back for now. And finally, we have Haikyuu. Haikyuu is wonderful, and so it is now completed 45 volumes, and so I still have a long way to go. <laughs> it's a lot of great teamwork, you know, relationship building, but it also talks a lot about volleyball. And, you know, this is one of the most iconic series that if you think of anime, you know, this might be the one that you think about. All right, so after this initial shelf on my second mini shelf, my bottom mini shelf, um, it loops back all the way around back to there. So let's continue over there. So the next series I have here is Food Wars and this is a very iconic series especially for its anime. However, a lot of people have said that the ending of the manga was very rushed and did not turn out to be what most people had hoped. So Food Wars, um, just by its name, is a series that revolves around food and food competition and unique recipes. Most people would know Food Wars based on the anime. The anime is something very special. I don't think it's very PG-13 just because the characters in the series have really intense reactions to the food that they eat and it's just a very interesting time. But I do have to admit the food in this series looks absolutely amazing in the anime. I think I'm currently watching the fourth plate, but yeah, the anime is very addicting and the opening songs and stuff like that are great as well. So I would highly recommend the anime, but yeah, I really did want to collect this series just because of the gorgeous covers. Yeah, <laughs> but hopefully the anime ending does it justice. Um, I'm, I'm not caught up, so I guess I'll have to see. And then next up we have Legendary Hunter x Hunter. Amazing, amazing, one of the classic shonen series in my opinion. Not that I read a ton of them, but it's an action-packed series with a lot of great characters. Not just like protagonists, but a ton of antagonists are really amazing as well. And everybody is just incredibly interesting in this series. We have the, you know, the main four, <laughs> Gon, Kilua, Kuropika, and Leorio, and yeah, all of their adventures are incredibly fun but very dangerous, and um, they encounter things like the Phantom Troop. Everybody in their Phantom Troop is incredibly charismatic, and even though, you know, they do <laughs> kill and stuff, which is very bad, but the characters make you want to root for them just because everybody just has a very deep story behind them. A lot of the themes in this story are actually much deeper than it appears. If you watch on YouTube, there are a ton of analysis videos on the different characters and what they represent in society and life, so I absolutely love watching those. Next up is Kaguya-sama Love is War, and this is a very classic series that is pretty recent and has recently caught the attention of a lot of anime fans. So the anime drastically grew um, due to, you know, this series being such a wonderful gem of comedy and, you know, a tingly bit of cute romance in a unique school life. And the president and the vice president are, you know, both in the student council, of course, and talks about their little mind games with each other. And all the characters in this series are so, so good. I really am looking forward to just keeping up with this series. And the anime as well is so, so good. So definitely go check out this series if you guys are looking for some comedic and just some relaxing, chill episodes to watch. Next, we have Komi Can't Communicate. And I really recently just obtained 2 through 10 through the Right Stuff holiday sale. But yeah, so Komi Can't Communicate um, about a girl with social anxiety and how her goal was to make 100 friends. And so it's very, very adorable. So they befriend each other and it's just very endearing. And so it's very easy to just, you know, read a couple chapters and take a break and then continue reading. So I really enjoy reading Komi when I just have a little bit of spare time but don't want to invest myself completely into a series. And yeah, so besides the series being phenomenal, um, I just do have one problem with it, the printing. <laughs> I talked more about this in my unboxing video, but look at this mess. 
This volume 5 is very, very misaligned. Volume 10, I don't know if you guys could just immediately tell, but I'm just very, very curious as to why volume 10 is taller than volumes 1 through 9, and not just by like a little bit, it's like significantly taller than all of the other Viz Shonen Jump series as well. So I just thought that that was very, very interesting, and I didn't notice either until I put it in my shelves. Next up is One Punch Man, and One Punch Man goes all the way until here. So yeah, I have volumes 1 through 21, which I think is caught up. One Punch Man, absolutely iconic series. I'm sure all of you guys would know it. It is very action-packed, but it is also hilarious. It is one of the most funny series that I personally think I own. It never fails to get me cracking. <laughs> to crack a lack in and even though I have already watched the anime several times, reading the manga doesn't make it any less boring or repetitive. I still think the jokes and the comedy still hit home for me and the plot is just really outstanding as well and all the characters are really interesting and fun to read about. Next up we have Spy Family and this is a very recent purchase and as well as very recent read. And I absolutely adore this series so far. But I found the premise of this and to be so, so unique. It's about a spy who has to, in order to complete his mission, he has to kind of make up a fake family. And you know, his fake family is very, very interesting. His child is a telepath, Anya, so adorable. And his wife, Yor, is an assassin who is so gorgeous and really, really sweet as well. And she really tries to take care of Anya and the family. And of course, we have Lloyd, the spy, the main guy character. And it, <laughs> we kind of get to see both of his action-packed sides and as well as his sweet moments with his family. And I really can't wait to see where this goes because there is a very strong plot behind this. I, of course, will be keeping an eye on Volume 3 and, of course, Volume 4 and everything that comes out later. I am really addicted to this series. All right, and then the next series I have here is Ruroni Kenshin, the three-in-one. And, and this was a pretty random purchase. I got this off of Facebook Marketplace. And yeah, I have not given this a read yet, but I've heard from a lot of people that this is really good. So I'll definitely give this a try after a ton of you guys have said that this story is amazing. So yeah, there's Ruroni Kenshin, a pretty classic series that a lot of people really enjoy. Next up, we have five centimeters per second. And... Five centimeters per second is a very bittersweet romance. And the art is absolutely stunning. It kind of reminds me of I Wanna Eat Your Pancreas just because of the pretty simple characters, but the very detailed backgrounds that just really add a lot to the story. This looks absolutely heartbreaking. So, you know, I will definitely be reading this sometime very soon. Next up, we have The Golden Sheep. And this was also a very, very recent purchase. And so The Golden Sheep is about a group of friends, but particularly one girl who moves away from her group of friends and then ends up coming back to her original town and kind of realizing how everybody has kind of changed in a way. And there are a lot of uh, musical stuff in there because our main character, she does play the guitar. And so I've heard people absolutely love The Golden Sheep. So yeah, there's The Golden Sheep and the author is Kari Ozaki, who is also the author of The God's Lie, which is a very popular, I think, one shot or like a one volume series that a lot of people really enjoy too. Next up we have, wow. <laughs> I have actually been really careless lately. I completely put this in the wrong order. These two. So I have The Flowers of Evil, The Complete Edition by Shuzo Oshimi. So I just happen to have the beginning and the end. And that is because volumes two and three were out of stock on right stuff. But I will be ordering them sometime. So The Flowers of Evil is a very intense kind of read that revolves around a ton of teenage issues, especially mental health, bullying, teasing, you know, self-identity, and a bunch of those stuff in a school, high school setting. It looks absolutely amazing, and a ton of people say that this is in one of their top 10 series of all time. I trust that this is a really great series. And Shuzo Oshimi is really well known for, you know, diving into topics such as these. So I'm sure that this will prove to be a very informative and perhaps eye-opening series for me. The next series we have here is Paradise Kiss, the 20th anniversary edition. And that is why it looks so chonk. <laughs> so here it is in its 
full glory so it's really hard to get the whole thing in shot right now but yeah this is what it looks like and this is by Ai Yazawa and so this is a very classic coming of age slash slice of life and drama manga that falls into you know all of those genres and it, it is very quite dramatic a lot of things happen and it's just a very fun journey. Yeah, I'm excited to reread this to experience everything all over again. Next up, we have Grand Blue Dreaming. This is another very iconic comedy series. Um, people know it to be one of the most hilarious series ever to be created. So yeah, this series, um, as you can see, there are a lot of fun things going on just through the covers. These are college students who are all in a diving club together and they go on a bunch of adventures and this entire series just revolves around their friendship and their exciting lives as college students but from what I read this is hilarious there are so many funny moments and the faces of all the people are just really funny <laughs> you know there we have an iconic face next up we have witch hat Adelaide um, which is a very mystical and magical series that a ton of people have recommended to me and a lot of people have said they really liked so I will be starting this very soon yeah, and I'll let you guys know my thoughts on it. But this edition looks really, really beautiful. I love the cover art and I really need to, you know, start diving into the magical and mystical world because I currently don't have any series like that. Next up, we have Rent a Girlfriend, a very, very popular series. And so I just got this series in yesterday. Therefore, I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but it sounds absolutely amazing. And I am so very excited to start and I will be keeping up with the rest of the series. And all the covers are absolutely stunning. We are finally almost done with this shelf. Shockingly, they are both wrapped. And so that means that there is some, you know, content in there that is not very child friendly. And I am being 100% honest when I say that I got this series without knowing that there were going to be kind of some spicy, interesting things going on in this series. So when I picked this up in my haul, a lot of comments were like, oh, I didn't know you were into that. And I'm like, what? So what am I into? And so it turns out, you know, this does have some interesting things in it. And it's kind of coincidental how it's placed kind of close to Paradise Kiss because this also revolves around, you know, like design, fashion. It's mainly around two people and how she really likes to dress up and cosplay and the guy who really likes to sew and make clothes. And so they kind of are like a perfect pair for one another. So yeah, I'm really excited to get started. All right, and then the last volume of this shelf is Prison School. Okay, this was a very questionable purchase. Now I'm thinking back and I'm not too sure why I purchased it, but at the same time, a ton of people have said that this series is very hilarious, but it's a very special type of comedy. So people either love this series or hate it. And so, you know, just judging by the seal, there is some explicit content in here. It just seems very interesting. And just by this back cover here, you know, like, dang, this girl got an hourglass figure. I'll let you guys know what I think of it when I read it. And this marks the start of our Yen Press large sized books. And so that is actually all for this first shelf right here. I went through each series kind of, and so we'll be moving on to these two shelves next. So I kind of did that already only to this top shelf right here. We're gonna continue on with our English series, continuing on over here and over here. And after we discuss those two shelves, we'll go back up here. And this is where my Japanese and a lot of foreign language manga exist. So starting off with the bottom mini shelf and the middle row, since we already talked about the upper one before with Haikyuu and Dead Man Wonderland and all that. So the first volume here is Twinkle Stars. So Twinkle Stars is by Natsuki Takayo, who is the same genius mangaka who wrote Fruits Basket. And so I'm sure all of you guys know Fruits Basket, but I just really adore that series so much. And this is a quite a chunky volume as well. And so, you know, this one is more of like your classic shoujo series where you know she meets a very mysterious guy in the middle of nowhere and you know she seeks to find the guy i will be continuing collecting this but not a top priority for now next up we have kakegure and wow 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 this is such an amazing series i recently read i think the first four volumes and i'm currently working on the fifth and so this series scares me sometimes it's 
all about gambling. So basically your hierarchy within school and the friends you have all depend on your ability to gamble. So if you lose, you basically lose your entire social life and also a ton of money in the process as well. So you basically lose your future. But if you manage to succeed and successfully gamble your way up to the top, you become the president of the school, you manage all of the school's funds, you have the most say in you know who gets to succeed, who doesn't. And it's just kind of terrifying in that way how you know your life could literally just depend on one simple game of chance. But this series also proves that, you know, it's not just chance that gets you the win. It's also your ability to read people and your abilities to kind of manipulate the game and kind of think outside the box. So yeah, absolutely loving this series. I will be getting the rest of this series and the anime also looks really good. Next up, we have Beastars and I actually got Beastars on a whim during an Amazon buy to... Whoops. <laughs> on an Amazon buy two get one free sale. So I ended up getting Beastars volume one, two, and five because three and four, weirdly enough, were not included in the sale. As you can tell by the cover <laughs> and the name are about, you know, animals who can communicate and who basically live as humans do. Apparently there's also a ton of like politics in this series regarding like the herbivores and the carnivores and how, you know, society works like that when your population <laughs> preys on different things. Yeah, I have not started reading this series, but if it's good, I'll definitely continue reading it. Next up is Blue Flag and oh my goodness, Blue Flag is absolutely amazing. I got this recommendation from a couple of people and decided to finally pick it up and I do not regret that at all. I actually just finished reading this last night. Wow, it is really, really good. So we have a very interesting dynamic between all of the characters here, this usually loner guy and then this very shy, timid girl and then we have the star athlete, you know, intelligent, very charismatic, popular guy. You can kind of see the the triangle forming. This is a romance series that occurs in a high school setting. It's just very, very cute. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only have volume one. Hi guys, it's editing Mangatama here and just wanted to kind of interrupt real quick. So on the topic of blue flag, I actually decided to pick up volumes two and three because I really, really loved the first volume so much. I recently just got these in <laughs> like a day ago. So I would like to add these to my collection and just let you guys know that now I have volumes one through three and I'm very excited to continue. Next up is Inyo's Asano's like solo story, Downfalls. Asano really touches upon some very dark things. So this one is no exception. Um, this series talks about a mangaka who finds himself spiraling downwards in life because you know, like career problems, life problems. And it's just a very dark story. I have not read this yet, but from what I've heard is people either like it or hate it. So um, I'll let you guys know what I think about that. Next up, we have Golden Kamui, and Golden Kamui is a very interesting series set in a time zone that usually not a lot of manga are set in. So this is set in the early 20th century. Uh, the main character here, Sugimoto, embarks on a journey to, you know, go find some treasure and gold, and the story just revolves around that. People really do enjoy this scene in series, and so hopefully I will too as well. I really do hear high praises about this, so I will be continuing to collect this if I do enjoy the first volume. Next up, we have Monster, and I have volumes one through three of Monster, and so I am currently in the very near end of volume one. As you can see right there, I'm so close to finishing it, but this story is really, really amazing so far. It is a very intense thriller mystery series that also revolves around a neurosurgeon who, you know, gets himself involved with murderers and killers. And so I personally really enjoy kind of like medical stories as well with medical bits and stuff like that to it. For some time, I was pretty interested in, you know, diving deeper into the medical field in my studies, but you know, I don't think I am fit for it now looking back at it. But yeah, the series so far is really, really great. All right, and the next series we got here is The Way of the House Husband. So this recently was announced that it was going to be turned into an anime, I believe, and I think it has a live adaptation as well. And I have seen so many, you know, pages and pictures of this manga posted on, you know, the manga subreddit and things like that. And a lot of people have super, super high praises for this because of course we have a former Yakuza boss who, you know, ends up being a house husband. And this entire series 
series is just him, you know, embarking on his adventures as a devoted house husband. So here we have him trying to, you know, fight for the groceries and him basically trying to protect his family. And it's just really, really cute because he tries to do a lot of things that, you know, perhaps normal to people, but for a Yakuza to be doing them, it's just very, very funny. So I will definitely be picking up the rest of the series as well. Next up, we have Tokyo Ghoul, and I have volumes 1 through 11, and I'm thinking about getting Tokyo Ghoul re box set very soon because Tokyo Ghoul is amazing. I watched the anime a long time ago and recently have revisited the story with the manga, and so I'm currently, I think, volume 9 or 10 of the manga, and it is really, really great. I absolutely love the story so far, and it's bringing back a lot of nostalgia, and compared to the anime, I actually really prefer the manga. I feel like the manga does really well in portraying all the characters and all the events, and so I think Tokyo Ghoul needs no further explanation, but yeah, I personally really enjoy it, and I will be collecting the rest of this series. Finally, we have Neon Genesis, and this is the special Viz edition, the volumes one through three in one. And so this is one of the most iconic, you know, series that actually defined and changed the mecha genre. And so this is set in a very futuristic world, 2015, but this, you know, series was created as an anime, I think in the 1990s. And so for them, they imagined that 2015 would be a very futuristic world and stuff like that. And so it's really, really intriguing to read. Editing Mangatama here once again, and I also ended up picking Neon Genesis, um, The Big Boy, <laughs> Volume 2, because I enjoyed the first volume so much, so now I have Volumes 1 and 2. So now that we are done with this shelf, let's go ahead and move down to the most bottom shelf of, you know, my bottom mini shelf. And so this is where I put a lot of the big, big volumes. So starting just from this side, I have two DVDs, K-On and Parasite. Um, not the Parasite that I mentioned before. We have a Parasite Dolls and K-On Season 2. And so these two DVDs are both... Um, ones that I got from the Right Stuff blind boxes using other creators codes and so yeah very grateful for those codes because I don't really collect DVDs but maybe it'd be fun to start. And right after our DVDs we have Vinland Saga and these are the very nice omnibus hardcover editions. So I have volumes one through three and I finished reading volumes one and two so I'm just making my way towards the third volume right now and so this is you know a viking adventure about a boy who is very interested in revenge because of you know what other people have done to his family and so the art in this is absolutely stunning a lot of people say that it reminds them of berserk and I completely agree just because of the level of detail and the art style is somehow a little bit similar and I also really enjoy this series just because it teaches you a lot about Vikings as well. Because behind, they always kind of discuss a little bit about, you know, all of the things that they talked about. So here we have a page of translation notes, which I really appreciate because they are really helpful to understanding the story. So yeah, Vinland Saga, a lot of people's favorite action-packed series. Very, very great. And next up, we have The Rose of Versailles. And I mainly got this for my mom a while back because she is in love with this series. But yeah, so I got this volume. This release is absolutely stunning. All of the pages are glossy and they feel like just like solid photo, like poster paper. The pages are extremely thick and this is a very dreamy series set in a very royal setting. And so anybody really interested in, you know, old series, I highly recommend this one. This one is a classic. And I'm looking to pick up volumes two and three that came out, and I think four is coming out soon. And then next we have JoJo's volume one, Phantom Blood, the very beginning of the series. And I have finished reading this volume and have also started watching the anime. So, you know, so far it's been a very interesting ride. I haven't made it quite far, but I just know that this series is a classic, a legend, but also very meme worthy in some times. So yeah, I'm very excited to, you know, kind of dive deeper into this series. Next up, we have one of the most famed um, horror series and also horror mangakas, Uzumaki's Junji Ito. And so this is the one with all of the spirals. 
And so yeah, we just have some very disturbing art in here. But basically, long story short, a city gets consumed by spirals and everything becomes into spirals and it's just a horrible time. Yeah, but this series is definitely a really great introduction to Junji Ito. I get why this is one of his most classic ones. It is very unsettling. And speaking of Junji Ito, I decided to also pick up Gyo, which is another one of Junji Ito's iconic works. But yeah, from the flip through, everything looks absolutely insane and very disturbing, just like, you know, Junji Ito's classic works. So yeah, very excited to add this to my collection and to start reading it as well. Next up, we have The Drifting Classroom. So previously I showed that I also have the singles or just, you know, one volume from the singles. But here are the really really pretty viz large editions and the cover is like almost kind of fabricy, but it's not it's matte but matte to the point that it feels like fabric so i really really do like this edition i think it's really unique and also just feels pretty high quality a classroom in a school one day they are just you know having a normal day and then the next second they look out their windows and everything is gone like the entire world that they knew previously was like broken and it was just rocks and lava and just nothing and so that can be a very scary experience especially since the classroom you know all of the students there are what like second graders third graders and so they should not be experiencing this level of trauma and horror at such a young age this is a very well done series and the art is one of a kind and lastly in this very bottom shelf we have berserk <laughs> iconic i really am not going to say too much here because if i do i'm just going to ramble on and on planning on picking up six very soon and i really just can't wait until all of singles are you know transformed into this beautiful edition i will cry the day that it comes where i have you know caught up because i'm pretty sure it'll just look really gorgeous but yeah i absolutely love this series totally get the hype around it highly recommend if you are part of the mature audience and are looking for something very intense to fill up your heart okay so i think it is time to move on to the last section of my entire collection which is this mini shelf right here these three shelves and so this entirely is my foreign language just <laughs> really just japanese and chinese collection and so i keep everything here kind of separated from everything else just because the asian publications are very different in size compared to the english ones and so i thought that i would just keep them separate just to make everything look a bit nicer and so let's start with the very top shelf. So over here, these series are also ordered in basically the exact same hierarchy that my English mangas went through. So it's first size, then publisher, then alphabetical. So the first series here that I have here is Neo Angelique, which, you know, to be honest, I have no idea what this is, but I got these two volumes for a dollar off of eBay when I first started collecting. And so at the time I really just got it, but now looking back, I'm not really sure why. I think this series originated from a game, perhaps I might be wrong, but yeah, this is definitely incomplete and I don't see myself collecting more of it. I might end up giving it away if somebody really wants it. And then after that, I have Fruits Basket, another volume three, and I saw this at Half Price Books, and I decided to pick this up just because it's so beautiful. Kyo on the front. Also because I don't have any Fruits Basket series so far, so I kind of just wanted one. After Fruits Basket, another, I have Blood Alone, volumes one through three. So Blood Alone also has an English publication, but here I have the Japanese one. And so at the time, I was just trying to get my hands on as many Japanese volumes as I could because I really wanted to learn the language. But of course now, you know, in retrospect, don't think that I was really interested in this series. The series um, talks about a vampire and her guardian. And so it's a very interesting dynamic and it looks very, and it looks like a very sad and lonely story. So that's why I have not started reading it yet, but I might perhaps give it a try. And then next to that, we have Dr. Surgeon Elise. And this is such a stunning, stunning cover. So I think this originally is a Korean manhua. It got released in Japanese, and so I found this Japanese version. But I really adore this cover and the art. And if I flip through it, the entire series is actually colored, which is really quite impressive. 
So yeah, just because it was so pretty, I ended up getting it. But I've also heard that this series is really, really good for people who have read it in English. And after that, we have Solanin by Inio Asano. So I have the Japanese version, which I bought on eBay. I have not read this yet either, but yeah, it seems like a pretty dark story, like a bunch of other Inyo Asano works. Next to that, I have Subarashi Sekai, um, which is a What a Wonderful World, again by Inyo Asano. I've heard that this is a very, very great series, and I got these two from a Reddit seller. But yeah, you can see very classic Inyo Asano artwork. Most of my Japanese ones I have not started just because it really takes me a long time to get through them. But I definitely will be at some point because these series are too good to not be read. And after that, after all that Inyo Asano, we have Aohara Ride, which is one of the most classic shoujo series by Iosaki Saka, who's also really well known for a bunch of her other shoujo series. So this is absolutely one of my favorite shoujo series to date. So I have the complete series, volumes 1 through 13, and I actually got these volumes from a very, very kind seller. So they shipped it over to me, and I'm just really happy to get these. And after that, I have Ashi Girl. I think this is a time traveling series from the last time I researched a bit. And so it's a very cute series that not a lot of people really know about, but I did have some comments saying that they really enjoyed this series. Next up here, I have Hakoidi no Musume, which is, which I only have a single volume of, but I know there is more to this. This is a Jose, I believe. I got this in a random Japanese volume lot. I'll let you guys know what it's about after I read it. And after that, I have Marmalade Boy Little. So this is related to Marmalade Boy. So yeah, Marmalade Boy Little is actually a sequel to Marmalade Boy. This one is not about Mickey and you, but rather like the half brothers and sisters of them both and their story. But yeah, I believe there are eight total volumes, seven or eight total volumes of Marmalade Boy Little that I really am interested in getting just because I'm so invested into the Marmalade Boy world already. So this next series is Okami Shoujo to Kuro Oji. Well, I'm sorry, I really butchered that. <laughs> my Japanese is very, very bad and my parents are disappointed. <laughs> but anyways, the English translation is Wolf Girl and Black Prince. And so this is another shoujo series that is kind of controversial. People hate or love the guy. I personally feel kind of neutral, but I absolutely really adore the series near the end. So this is a stray volume, volume two, and I might be collecting the rest of it. I'm not really too sure. I do, I did enjoy the series, but I'm not sure if I would reread it again. And then here we have Love Me, Love Me Not. <laughs> the name is way too long in Japanese to say, but this is also by Iosaki Saka. And so this is one of her newer series that is also getting an anime movie adaptation, I believe, that has already come out, I think. And so this kind of reminds, this cover reminds me of Ultramaniac and how the story is about two girls and two guys and you know, they're crisscross love stories. When it's of a love square, that gets hard <laughs> because you got people liking, you know, each other like left and right. And then sometimes, you know, it's not like perfectly matched up and everything and people have different feelings. So yeah, this is a very interesting series. There is an English publication, but I ended up getting the Japanese one through another Japanese manga lot. So I'm very happy to have it. On to our next shelf, um, the next series we have here is My Love Story, but in Japanese. So I have the complete series, volumes 1 through 13 in Japanese. So this is a very, very cute introduction to shoujo that I highly recommend everyone to, to read at some point. The characters are tremendously charming and the entire story just brings a smile to your face. Next to my love story, we have Sumika Sumirei. And so this is another Jose manga. This was included in one of the random Japanese romance manga lots that I bought from Mercari a while ago. And I'm actually really happy to get this because I'm literally in love with this art. So yeah, the art is <laughs> really stunning. It kind of reminds me of Webtoon art, but like soft Webtoon art, if you know what I mean. Like the lines are not really defined especially like the hair and stuff, but especially the way that they draw the guys really remind me of Webtoon. 
it is actually kind of like a time traveling series because it revolves around this main girl who ends up getting old of age and still not falling in love and being single at I think it was 60 years old but then she gets given a second chance to go back to her youth specifically I think it was 17 or 18 years old and she kind of gets to experience that like you know youth romance and stuff like that so yeah I thought that that was really really interesting and it's kind of sad if she ends up having to go back to her normal life after she gets to go back in time so I don't know if it's, it's like she gets to go back in time permanently or if it's just like a cool you know travel back in time but it doesn't really affect the future so I personally do not know what happens because I haven't you know started reading this series but yeah I'm just really interested to see how that's all gonna play out Right next to that, we have Kodomo no Omocha, which is Karocha. <laughs> but here I have the first volume in Japanese, and I think that this, not gonna lie, is probably one of the first volumes that I bought by myself. But yeah, I feel like this is the first volume that I ever bought myself when I first started my collection eight months ago. And so, yeah, <laughs> clearly just from that, you can tell how important this series is to me. And oh, speaking of, you know, the oldest manga I've bought myself, this one actually might be the oldest, but when I bought this, I didn't have the intention of starting a manga collection. I would say I bought this a healthy eight to nine years ago when I was visiting Japan. And I think even at a young age, I was really attracted to really cute covers. But yeah, this is the story of, I think a brother and a sister live together and both are very, you know, attractive looking and they attract a lot of looks from the outside side and the many girls like him and I think a guy or two likes her but the art in this series is so so adorable again it is like classic shoujo but you know this really appealed to me when I was younger and I really enjoyed you know making my way like very slowly through this series a long time ago so yeah there's romantic o'clock <laughs> all right and then over here we have our first you know signs of stacking <laughs> but yeah so here's city hunter and it actually continues on towards um the bottom shelf a very nostalgic series and this was passed on to me from my dad who actually collected them when he studied abroad in japan so yeah this is a very special series to him and i have not started reading this but i do know the existence of a korean drama called the city hunter but i'm pretty sure the manga will definitely bring some different vibes so yeah, City Hunter was serialized I think in the mid 1980s to like the early 1990s so yeah this series is definitely reminiscent very reminiscent of those times just because of that the art of each cover looks absolutely amazing and yeah I'm happy to have the entire collection volumes 1 through 35 here in my shelves and moving on down to our next shelf, we can see the rest of City Hunter. And my dad actually bought City Hunter for used back in the 1990s, I believe. So yeah, it's still in remarkably good condition. All right, moving those animals aside, here we have Aonatsu, a very refreshing summary shoujo read. So it revolves around this girl going over to her grandmother's place or, you know, some different place during the summer hence the name and there she gets to kind of have a summer romance so i have not read far into this series i'm still slowly making my way but i really do love the summer vibes of this and these covers are absolutely stunning everything just reminds me of a very chill japanese summer and then after aonatsu we have chihaya furu which has an anime adaptation and karuta. So basically it's like a card game, but a very advanced word game at the same time. It's a very traditional Japanese game. People are able to play it competitively. So that is what the people in Chihaya Furu do. So we have, you know, a group of high school students who decide to take up karuta um, professionally, play with the big names and kind of make their way through the arena, just like a lot of sports series do. And so yeah, Chihaya Furu, you learn a lot about culture, um, the game, the Japanese traditions and also there's a lot of romance and friendship and stuff like that in that series as well. Moving on to Kyo no Kirakun. <laughs> but yeah, this is the complete series volumes 1 through 9 and this is another shoujo series revolving around a guy and a girl, the main two characters we see here and the girl has trouble speaking up in her class due to previous traumas with bullying and stuff. So she has the pet bird as her aid and then we have this guy who seems seemingly very chill and doesn't have much stuff going on in his life but 
turns out he actually has an illness. So it talks about their friendship and of course their possible romance. We are moving on to the final part of my collection, but here we have Pete JK, which is another Japanese romance <laughs> kind of story, but this one has a twist to it. There's an age gap. So as you can see here, the guy is a police officer and the girl is clearly a high school girl. So he is 22 and she is somewhere in high school, <laughs> but basically they meet at a mixer and yeah, all of that ensues. But yeah, this is a very, very cute and heartwarming series that if you guys are interested in specifically age gap romances, then definitely check this out. So that is actually all for our Japanese manga. Now we are on to the final section. Oh, there are actually some other Japanese volumes at the very end there, but they are a larger size. But this section in the middle here are my traditional Chinese manga from Taiwan. First of all, we have Haikyuu volume 43. I got this new from Taiwan and I just personally got this because I wanted to see how all the terms and stuff like that were worded in Chinese and I really do want to improve my reading. And so next to that, I have Chobits by Clamp, volumes 1 through 5, which is incomplete. But yeah, these are the traditional Chinese versions as well. And the reason why I got these in Chinese were simply because I saw that they were available. But if these are hard to find for the rest of the series, I might end up picking up the English ones because I really do like Chobits. It's a very um, childhood series for me, even though some moments of the anime were not very child friendly. <laughs> So this one right here is Sailor Moon Eternal Edition Volume 7 and I got this at Half Price Books and this is the Japanese version. Originally when collecting Sailor Moon, I really thought about just starting off with the Eternal Editions but then looking at the prices, they were all so expensive. I decided to go with the singles. Perhaps one day once I've saved up a bit and I've collected everything that I wanted to, then I'll kind of splurge on getting the prettier editions. And our last two final series, Love is Hard for an Otaku Wotakoi. These are um, one of the first Japanese volumes that I actually got. And I absolutely adore these covers and the textures. They're, you know, very textured. And so I've been seeing so many clips of this anime everywhere, but I have not started on the series. All I know is that this is a workplace romance series, perhaps a Jose series, but I'm very, very excited to start. The opening song is so addicting, by the way. But yeah, there it is. All right, so there's my entire collection as of January 3rd, 2020, and I just wanted this video to be one of the first ones that I released in 2020 to, you know, have a good start to the year and to also track my progress as I keep collecting throughout the years. And so thank you guys so much for staying here with me until now. And apologies again if I did indeed talk way too much about each series. I tend to get really excited and can't stop blabbering on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video again and I really had fun doing it despite it taking me <laughs> an eternity. But yeah, I really had fun and I hope hope you guys did as well. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!